fields of golden wheat. But if climate change continues to warm the planet, they could soon look like this, says Frank Evert. He meets up with me in an experimental field at the University of Bonn. He and his international team have been trying to find out exactly how rising temperatures affect wheat yields. Wheat is cultivated around the globe, from the US to Russia, from Angola and Egypt to China. Frank Evert fears that rising temperatures could reduce crop yields drastically and that certain regions would be especially hard hit. In the regions that already contend with high temperatures, such as southern Europe, Spain, or in areas like Australia, that's where rising temperatures are likely to cause even greater damage. Here in the greenhouse, the scientists test how different strains of wheat react to heat and drought. So far, climate change hasn't affected yields. The researchers say that's mostly thanks to more resistant varieties. This type was first planted in Germany 80 years ago, and we see that the heads are relatively small, fairly compact, and would not give the kinds of yields that we can get with modern varieties. To compare, we have a variety here that's fairly new and that's still being grown. The heads are much bigger. They produce more kernels per head, and the kernels will probably be bigger too. But high-performance varieties need special fertilizers. Not every farmer can afford them. But without them, even the improved breeds won't produce bigger harvests. The effects of heat on the wheat depends on the stage of the plant's development. Increased temperatures during flowering cut down the return significantly. The researchers also use predictive models to calculate what percentage of the wheat harvest gets lost when temperatures rise. They found that a global temperature rise of only one degree Celsius may lead to the loss of 42 million tons of wheat annually. But temperatures could rise as much as five degrees by the year 2100. Agricultural economist Joachim von Braun, who heads the Center for Development Research in Bonn, is familiar with those calculations. He says falling global food supplies can lead to conflicts. The consequences of food shortages are not only that people will be forced to tighten their belts, which they don't have anyway. The consequences will be economic. They'll involve political stability in entire societies. And there will be consequences for coming generations. Frank Evert is concerned about those problems and hopes society will change its attitude to climate change. I wish that there was more awareness for this topic in society, that more people realize that climate change is a problem that we as a society can influence, and that societies would also develop a certain consciousness for climate change and food security. But he is also placing his bets on science. New, more resistant species that can handle climate change may be able to counter the threat of hunger.